Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today, I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a pro desert base. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And right here, you can see a pretty large pallet. Generally, you don't need to use all of these things, but I strongly recommend getting all the sandstones and such. And then, what you do need is to go to the end. I mean, this is a pretty tough build, you saw how large it was. You're gonna need to go to the end for end rods for the fancy ceilings. Then, you need to get yourself a pretty decently sized flat area. It doesn't need to be this large, but it needs to be decently sized. And you may notice that several of my other desert builds are here, because I uh, completely chunk wiped the areas they were in, and moved them over here because I needed those areas for something else. Not to mention, I was running out of room. But anyways, with all these builds moved and a nice flat area, it's now time to begin construction. Right here, you can see I have a little bit of a base. Not like this is something you need to do, but it's rather to teach a skill. You can see right here, I have this nice sandstone wall. Of course, connected textures may be a little bit cheating, but still. But then on the top, I have the same texture. This is because I use sandstone stairs. Because when placed upside down, they still have their bottom texture on the top, which means you pretty much have access to another sandstone pallet. And it's pretty cheap. All you need to do is bring your normal sandstone and turn it into stairs at a stone cutter. From here, start planning out your build. And don't make it one building. Over there, you can see a very simple starter base. Don't make it like that. This is a pro base. You can do something a bit more advanced. I recommend putting together several buildings. Make generic rectangles, but think about different heights. And then, you'll want a moat. But I'll talk a little bit more about that once I have those basic models in place. Right here, I have the beginnings of one of the several buildings that will comprise this. And there is something you need to keep in mind. The moat and the path. Depending on what you want to do with the build, you might not have a path connecting every single building. I'm going to make a collection of smaller buildings so that way I can make individual styles. And then, the moat should surround all of it, or at least the border of the whole collection of buildings. Okay, where my cursor is going, this area is roughly what my build is going to take up, then make the moat go across there. It can have separate moats on the inside, but that's beside the point. You need these around in order to get a little oasis vibe. Then put in some drip leaves, some big, some small, maybe even some sea grass or any other little plant you want, perhaps even sea pickles. And then you'll have a more interesting area. As for this path, make sure you texture it using stairs. And whatever you do, don't do these. Nobody likes potholes. They're not fun to go through. And now, you have yourself a pathway and a moat. Do these around the buildings that you design. Now, what I've done is I've used all of the steps now in order to produce a very large base plate. You can see, I textured this. The sides are rimmed with some sandstone. Oops, accidental pitfall. Make sure that you walk over the areas towards the edges. That's where the majority of your pitfalls might end up. Then, we have ourselves, well, an outline. You can see, it looks a little like Among Us. But anyways, we have the water trench going all around. It's decorated with all the various water plants and such. Sea pickles too for the bioluminescence. And you can see, this is a nice pleasant place to be. Of course, rabbits will get stuck in all of your textured floors. Kind of a downside of it. But otherwise, it's pretty. From here, what you want to do is create a line going through the middle of the base. And doing a quick change today. You can see, I have a circle here. This will be the observatory. And it's going to be a fancy building I'm going to reserve for towards the end. The rest of these are going to be miscellaneous buildings for things like libraries and blacksmiths. What you want to do from here is create basic outlines like this. I did a circle out of terracotta. There's a circle generator in the description below. And make your basic outlines. I recommend making your own because of course I'd be here all day if I told you how to do this block by block and it would be pretty boring to make a cookie cutter of this building. Instead, 
try making your own variation. And a miscellaneous detail is if you have a tall foundation like this, add a little texture, maybe some terracotta and stairs in order to make it look like there's something inside. When planning your areas like this, generally you want to put your taller buildings towards the middle. Of course, this isn't always the case, but if you create a wall of tall buildings going around, then you'll hide shorter buildings like this one. Right here is a pretty simple sugarcane farm. I've already made a tutorial on it as seen over there. You might be able to see an iCard in the top right talking about it in case you're interested. But anyways, we have a couple of lanterns here and a fire for lighting, along with a patio, but more about the patio in a moment. Right now, here's what it looks at night. And you can see, haphazardly placed lanterns provide the necessary lighting in conjunction with the sea cucumbers, well, sea pickles. And now, there's something else that I want to discuss. The fact that right here, I have tunnels going through the building. The reason for this is because I wanted something a bit more varied for this. If you have basic foundations all the way around, that's boring. You can put terracotta like this in order to prevent basic sandstone, but even then, that might not be enough. By doing these water channels makes it a bit more interesting. And then, after this, what you want is a staircase into it. If your thing is wide like this, maybe create a patio. I turned this one into an alchemy patio by using barrels, cauldrons, and brewing stands in order to create a functional area. And then down here, a little storage for your potions so that way you don't have to go back and forth between your storage units. Instead, all your brewing supplies are right here and easily accessible. From here, make a list of everything you need. A farm, potentially a pumpkin melon farm if you want to make a building for that instead of putting it underground. Then you'll need somewhere to enchant. I'm going to have this dome shaped building for enchanting, but it's going to have a walkthrough and a first floor. Perhaps put something in there. But you really need to include a bunch of rooms, otherwise you're going to have big empty buildings or big empty swaths of space. Right here, I have myself my foundation and some extra walls. What I recommend doing here is using stairs and slabs to produce more interesting designs. At the beginning of my video, the foundations were like this. Now, they're like this. I think it looks a little bit better this way. And now, I copied a design all the way across using stairs in different ways than usual. Even hid the shroom light here. How I did it? Like this. I have a stair here. And then I mirror this on the other side. Block this. And now when you grab yourself the light itself, if you can get the angle, I cannot grab the angle from there unfortunately, you can see how you can't actually see it from the front. You can only see it from the sides, which is the intention with this. Now my tips. Here you can see the terracotta is textured with orange instead of completely red, and then some purple up here. Make sure you use different terracottas all throughout the build. Surprisingly, I have never used purple terracotta on this channel, nor have I used pink to my knowledge. And then, in here, you can see I alternate between cut and chiseled sandstone, along with white stained glass windows. Now, it's more interesting from the inside and the outside than plain sandstone. Of course, you do need some sandstone exclusive structures here and there. You can see how this old starter house that I've probably referenced 40 times throughout this video. Well, it uses a little bit of a simplistic palette, uses only two terracotta colors. It's pretty basic. Well, improve upon it. You can see here, even though I technically use less terracotta, I'm using things like logs hidden in here, extra lights, more interesting shapes, all that. That's what you want to try to do with this build. And here is actually a storage room. Go down here, use your foundation, and although we have shroom lights hidden about, well, make your walls smaller like this. Use stairs on the ceiling to provide an extra layer of structural support, maybe even some rafters like this, who knows? You should try as many things as you can. With your walls now in place, it's now time to do rudimentary interior for your immediate storage needs. Right here, I recommend putting some blocks that you're going to actually keep in the chest down below. As per usual, I use bamboo mosaics as my placeholder, 
because it looks like a construction-esque block without being confused with the actual bamboo planks, which look a bit more natural. And then we have down here, same thing, we're going to decorate the walls with whatever block you need. And since I'm not actually living in this build, I'm going to leave it as mosaic. But if you have a block that needs to be sorted, replace a column in the wall with the mosaic, so that way you have easy storage. For the rest of the interior, I recommend waiting until the walls are complete, and then we'll have our ceilings, pretty simple, and then our roofs. But a cool trick that I highly recommend is a little bit of a change up in how you're doing the build. You can see how these walls are off-center to these ones, and not off-center in a bad way, I mean they're aligned differently. Notice how this build keeps them exactly consistent, and what do you know? I've made a box with depth. It's not exactly very interesting. And here, by off-centering them just a little, you can see how much of a difference it makes. Although you do have a new challenge, these corners. I recommend putting some moss down, maybe some stairs like this, who knows? Might be a little too obscuring, but you could potentially turn it into a patio if you can. You can use moss carpet in order to hide a light source. Changing myself back into midnight mode, you can see it's all nicely lit up. Temporary torches on the inside for this effect. And yeah, you can see how this all works. A transitional layer here. Make sure you always have these if you plan on putting floors between these layers. Otherwise, you're going to have some really weird floor plans. I put down some logs behind them, did more excessively complex stairs. I do not recommend copying these stairs, I recommend making your own designs because, well, it would be more interesting that way, prevents cookie cutters from being made out of this, you know, I strongly recommend you make a unique build off of these instructions, and, well, who's actually going to go through the effort of copying this, I'm not even sure what's going on half the time. With all these, do random things in here, and you'll eventually come up with a room. And one final instruction before the next clip, see if you can incorporate glazed terracotta into the mix. Right about now, you should be almost done with this structure right here. But a couple final notes. One, planter boxes with flowers inside would be a really good addition to this build. Keep that in mind. And then, here you can see I combined some of the yellow segments down here. Think about combining segments on various parts of the build, you'll be able to make larger windows. And some parts, while you won't be able to make windows, will still be a little bit more interesting. It's up to you if you want to texture this piece right here with something such as orange terracotta. For example, here is what it might look like if textured if I can learn how to place things again. Like this. It's up to you if you want to have that. I prefer it flat on this segment, so I'm going to remove them. But here, your final segment needs to have a roof. You might want to do something more like a castle, where you have the up and down segments. Something like this, and then you go down, and then you go up. Who knows? But make sure that you have a roof, and it cannot be pointed. If you make it like a normal house roof, it's going to be very, very funny looking, and is not going to work. With a top now installed on this, you can see this individual structure is complete. How I did it is I put down a bunch of lime terracotta things and then I gave them a pattern where I'd make them go up and down. Pretty simple initially. And then I added extra stairs. Notably, I definitely uh, made mistakes intentionally to complete during this segment. And then added a few little things in between, you know, general things. And after all this, then what you want to do is go to the roof and install something. I personally did a farm. I'm going to have multiple farms throughout this build for extra greenery because, of course, this is a desert. But anyways, we have that. The four main double plants that you can bone meal. Well, there's only four of them, but still. Some pots and a composter. And yeah, that's this part done. Going back down. You can see, very simplistic second layer, it's only glazed terracotta, jukebox, four note blocks, there's supposed to be music discs in here but I didn't add any, pot, and then each corner of the room is designated to a different crafting station. Don't forget terracotta and your upside down sandstone stairs for your mason area. Now, 
Congrats, you have a storage room. Now we have the rest of the base. Woohoo! But for this part, I recommend doing something different. We don't want all of this again, because sure, segmented builds can look really good, but they don't exactly have the most shape to them. Instead, I recommend looking over towards villages for inspiration. Specifically, this house right here with the double layers. I recommend taking inspiration from various other desert builds in order to make a better one of your own. After all, I mean, one person can supply an idea, but you have the whole internet on your side. You can get a bunch of desert build ideas and collage them into one. But for now, I'm going to have that weird staircase style in place. Now, I currently have a pretty basic shape for this building right here. You can see a staircase goes up from this floor all the way up to here, which means we can include a bunch of different things in this building. Down at the foundation, I stuck to the typical segmented design. This is going to be our blacksmith part, which means we want to generally avoid a little bit of terracotta and keep it a bit more industrial looking. After all, I mean, there are going to be metal things being hit and flares flying. You don't exactly want to ruin your terracotta walls like that. Then, down here, I have this little awning. Use some oak trap doors like this. Quite expensive, but it looks nice in the end. And then, you can place down a few basic things. Maybe a grindstone and a few basic armor stands with iron armor. Preferably with trim if you can afford it. And then, with that, you want to go back up and designate your rooms. The real challenge with this building is how you're going to texture the walls. With a typical segmented design like this, it's very easy because, of course, you're going to be sharing the walls with the outside. But for here, you might want to go something a little bit flatter rather than something super colorful like this, which can create issues. Now, this build is starting to get a little bit of wall depth, and there are a couple of different strategies I'm employing to make sure this looks good. First off, I like adding some depth to my walls. Carve out little pieces, of course doing the hiding the shroom lights trick. Maybe even some logs. Of course, I'm using some teeth, like tower top teeth, like I was going to use for this build, until it turned into whatever that is. And now, you can see this top part looks really good. You can also go plain flat and not do much. Right here, I do that. And it's a little subjective. It's up to you whether you like this style. I think it works sparingly. Also, Sometimes you won't have enough room for proper roofs on your rooms. In that case, I recommend trap doors. And with all of this in mind, combine various strategies. But the number one tip I really have to say is, not all windows require glass. Right here you can see, none. And it looks good. And although right here you can see it has its benefits, here stained glass from time to time works as well. Sometimes it's best to go without it. Of course, all these are basically built in completely different styles. I mean, if you were to put these two next to each other, there's a chance that you might say that they're from different builders, but I think that's for the better. Continue doing detailing, and remember you have roof space. Try to employ it. Right here, I've added some extra details. The logs, the windows, a little chimney since this bottom part is going to be a forge, and then some fence gate windows. It's still a work in progress, you can see, but the idea is here. We have a pretty simplistic room, still needs a way in and out, but you go up, and then you can navigate this place freely using a pretty simplistic design and not having to deal with segmenting, which, although it looks good, can get repetitive very quickly. So I recommend not relying on this style too much. You can see right here produces a very interesting house. And then down here, you'll have your sunken in windows. Try to incorporate this depth space to design. You might want to change these back into terracotta despite what I said earlier, mainly because it would get a little too samey otherwise. And then, once you have your forge in here, like the anvils, smithing tables, grindstones, then I'm going to be building a very simple farm right here. At last, this place is non-navigatable and thus complete. Down here, a chest to store your armor trims along with your more damaged anvils. On the inside, you have some chainmail armor, a forge with furnaces at the bottom for actual smelting, 
blast furnaces along the back, which I was too lazy to get actual granite for, so I only used stairs, and a bunch of other miscellaneous things. Up here, more decorations. I recommend making sure that no piece of your wall goes undecorated for three or more blocks. Otherwise, your place is going to be empty. This also applies to floor space, so make sure to fill it up with things like bookshelves, tables, candles, etc. And then up here, same deal. And then up here, nothing. I'm going to leave it empty. This balcony might get a chair later, but it's not very important. With this, the building's now done, and we can move on to the farm. Make sure that you have about 9 blocks wide of area you can use for solid dirt. If you can, then you'll have a pretty efficient farm. Right here, I have a very simple crop farm. Down the middle, we have some moss carpets over water, because yes, you can actually place that. All you need to do is start off from a non-water block and then place it over, then shroom lights under it for lighting. Then, I plant my crops in rows in order to increase their growth speed, because intercropping real-life mechanic is actually in Minecraft. And then, simple stair pattern here, nothing very interesting. Down here, extra water, blue terracotta, hidden shroom lights, so that way it's always nice and lit up. From here, another thing is if it connects to your water channel, then don't do the shroom lights. It will be noticeable from the outside. To make up for this, place extra sea pickles. And now, we want to move on to the tower. But since this video is getting pretty long, I'm only going to give general tips before showing the finished product. Try copying something similar to this tower, while using some of the designs from the two buildings you already have. Right here, I have the beginnings of this tower. It's pretty simple, all concepts I've already taught, like the foundation, including plants, some terracotta, cyan terracotta for once, which can be really hard to incorporate, surprisingly, and hidden lights. Can't even get an angle on them. And then, the inside, simple silo. But at the top, there's the new concept, the dome roof. And while this one's more pointed, there are a bunch of different ways you can go about this. Although you can start off points, and then do two at a time, make it go up and converge, you can also make it more rounded to make an onion dome. Or you can use a sphere generator, linked in the description below, in order to make a complete sphere for a dome. It's up to you which one you want to use, but I strongly recommend using terracotta or concrete for it, because sometimes Terracotta isn't vibrant enough, but an important note, make sure it's tall enough. If it's too short, it's going to look silly, and it's going to require some refining. You can see, it looks kind of weird like this, but over time, you want to shave off a couple blocks, make minor adjustments, and eventually you'll get something. Perhaps practice this part in creative mode. With the dome here, you can see the build looks really nice. Along with a few hidden shroom lights, can't see these from lower angles, you now have yourself a tower. On the inside, I did some useless parkour with very minimal decoration, mainly only lighting. You can add a bit more decoration if you want, I'm probably going to do so off camera. Now, we have a pit, is signified by the black concrete, and then a bubble elevator for getting in and out of the mines. And now, you have a mining area, a farm, a blacksmith, a storage room, alchemy, and sugarcane. Which really leaves a void with the library being this observatory in the middle. And then this room. It's up to you what you want to do with it. I'm personally going to make it a bit more decorative and turn it into a bathhouse. Take inspiration from what the ancient city does. Maybe look on the wiki for advice about what that building looks like to build your own bathhouse. But, of course... This building is pretty much whatever purpose you need. Now, about the part where I said to build another building, well, I lied! I did not do another building, I instead built pillars. But yes, building pillars in this spot might actually work. Because you can see, you can do a bit more. I have these flower pillars with some frog lights inside and some purple stained glass. And then down here, I have these dimly lit flames. Here, the actual bath, which is just mud, and now I have a cute little area that takes up space while still looking pretty. And now, finally, the observatory. And this building is going to take a very similar turn to the tower. The only difference is that you need to make two floors, and complete floors for that matter, 
and then have access on all sides without using doors. I strongly recommend you do not use any doors. How you actually go about this is going to vary between builders, but using the rest of the tips I gave in the video, it will be quite the challenge, but still possible. Using the tips I used in the rest of the video, such as using stairs on the outside, various terracottas, etc., I've produced this building here on a circular format. The only major difference is the fact that on the inside, of course, lots of books, and then the yellow terracotta being carved into it, that's the unique thing, and then these windows. Down here, enchanting, and you see the rest of it. This video is getting pretty long, and I have to cover how to do the dome. For this, open up the description of this video, and then scroll down to the shape generator in order to produce yourself a sphere. Get the radius of this, and then, once you have your sphere, you want to do it from roughly the middle block. You might want to choose a slightly lower block, so that way it doesn't immediately go up. What I mean by this is you might want like three blocks before it starts curving inwards rather than instantly starting to curve inwards, if you get what I'm saying. Either way, produce your half dome on top of this and then make it out of whatever color you want. I'm using blue terracotta. Then on the inside, coat it with black concrete. Right here, the dome is finished, extra red terracotta to make it more interesting, and then some hidden lights. Now. It's time for the inside, and you do need night vision for this time because, well, it's completely dark in here. And your issue is, well, you have the inside of the dome coated in black concrete for a starry night sky, and then you have your sandstone in place to provide a nice ending. From here, what you want to do is create layers of black stained glass. I'm doing it pretty quickly because world edit, you can see how it creates a foggy effect at the top. Now go through on each layer, you know your trapdoors might be able to be used for crawl space. And then when you add your end rods through the different layers, it's much easier to do it one layer at a time. Then you'll have a little bit of a night sky. Do this repeatedly until you reach the top, and then you'll have that part of the build complete. Finally, go outside and fill in any area remaining that doesn't have a building. Whether it be through small farms, decorations, kind of like this bath here, nether wart farms, etc. At last, the video is now complete. You can see this whole build is completely functional, with a path if you built anything else nearby to connect it, a nice little wrap around so you can go around the whole build, extra details include big drip leaves near big buildings, and then of course, a little chimney there, different building styles to keep it interesting. And then once you go all around, you can see it's all nicely lit up. Hopefully mobile users should be able to see this build completely fine regardless of the time. And then you can navigate the whole place quite freely with these little pathways. Cute little areas here and there, some bees, other things. And you can see it's all quite nice. As for the little thing at the very top, well, here's our starry night sky. You can see it almost does look endless because how much fog there is and although you can still roughly make out the ceiling shape still it looks really nice if you happen to have a desert nearby and decided you want to live in it well maybe you want to do a massive amount of excavation on that in the badlands and create this of course you don't have to do this all in one sitting i mean this took me about 25 hours of consecutive work of course with breaks but still you can see this is quite the build but you can indefinitely expand it technically. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. If you had any troubles with this build, leave a comment down below. I still respond to them. Gearsaw, out. <laughs>